everyone, and welcome to the 10.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, Excalibur, and the story continues. Our speaker is Heike Philp. Heike is CEO of Let's Talk Online, an immersive education specialist for language teaching and learning. She's co-initiator for the Virtual Classroom and EU-funded Lancelot and Avalon Virtual World, as well as Camelot Project, which is Machinima for Language Teachers and Guinevere, which is Games in Virtual Worlds. She's founder of the Virtual Roundtable Conference and co-owns Edunation in Second Life and in OpenSim. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. And again, please put the word question before your actual question in the chat if you need to uh, ask a question in local chat. So welcome again, everyone, and let's begin the session. Over to you, Huck. Hello, and good evening to some. Good afternoon, good morning. Thank you very much for being here. And I'm happy to have been following in the footsteps of Helena, although this is really difficult. Hasn't she done a wonderful presentation? And to be honest, I am truly at marvel at what she's been doing in OpenSIM. Thank you so much, Helena, for your hard work with your students. And you are giving us often so often the solid pedagogical principles of teaching in world. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I'm here to talk about Excalibur. So Excalibur is now it's finally been funded. Um, yes, yes, yes. After it's the fifth one after Lancelot, Avalon, Guinevere, Camelot, now Excalibur. And uh, it is wonderful to hear that the European Commission in the Erasmus Plus program has got some funds left over for that one. And uh, Excalibur, I've talked about it last year already when we did some special sort of uh, proposal. And then at that time, we got turned down because the project coordinator was uh, uh, British. You know, it was a university in UK, and because of Brexit, they didn't they didn't grant us the funds. So we resubmitted with a new project coordinator then in spring this year, and that's the yeah yeah that's the uh, Finnish university project coordinator. So. Let me talk about what Excalibur stands for. And I know it's a little bit long. It's even as long as that almost the speak easy heart can't handle it. Expanding content and language integrated learning through building a sustainable future in real time in immersive environments. And um, there's something great about this acronym. And the acronym, oh, so just to mention the University of Finland who's project coordinator. And there's something great about this acronym because it contains another acronym, which in the language learning world has a lot of meaning and a lot of famous uh, connotation to it, which is CLIL. Does anybody of you know what CLIL stands for? Have you heard about this language learning policy, which in Europe, <laughs> thank you, Buffy, uh, which in Europe has been a kind of the major language learning policy. I mean, there is no, in Europe, there's no language ministry as such, but uh, all of the countries just follow recommendations by ECML, which is kind of apart from uh, Council of Europe, uh, you know, an extended arm of Council of Europe, but they're following recommendations and the recommendations are based on research and research has found that if students school and pupils in schools learn STEM subjects in the schools in their respective language, and this is what the acronym stands for, content language is an approach for learning content through an additional language 
does teaching both the subject and the language. So the subject is usually is um, STEM, STEAM, STEAM subject, subject, subjects like science, technology, engineering, arts and math. And they are taught in English rather than in the, con in the language of the respective country. And it's not taught in English, not in Italian, in German. It's taught in English in the schools in Europe. And this policy has been widely uh, implemented and it's rather difficult for some of these science teachers. On the other hand, the students are very excited about it. So it's very popular amongst the pupils for some, you know, and so they've been uh, working hard in implementing CLIL in Europe. So in Excalibur, which will be focusing on immersive building, um, the project coordinators and some of the universities, and I'll be talking about the project partners now, um, a university in Nordisk Atiske uh, in Norway, and they are at the very, very most northern tip of Norway. So they're near the Arctic Circle. So they're very interested in uh, teaching at a distance. And uh, in their case, it is the German CLIL form, CLIL Lote it's called. And the uh, University of Norway is providing some expertise when it comes to STEAM subjects in the schools being taught in German, interestingly. Then uh, Germany is present, Landesmedien uh, Zentrum, Teacher Gaming. <laughs> Teacher Gaming is an amazing partner because they developed Minecraft Edo before it was acquired by Mojang. And it's not the Microsoft Minecraft Edo. They are not uh, those ones, but they've built up a community of 20, some 70,000 teachers who are playing Minecraft. So, and it focuses a lot on Minecraft. So the schools involved, Minecraft is the core sort of, um, yeah, technology and OpenSim will also be deployed. I mean, initially in the project, there was a, a clear direction of doing OpenSim as well, but uh, budget funds, cuts, which is normal when you apply for funds, yeah. Um, they're not drastic, but um, we might still work on on uh, even like not doing things in OpenSim. I don't know yet. Um, the project will start in March and the project partners will meet in January, February to discuss the technologies involved. It will be Minecraft and MindTest, which is the open source version of Minecraft and hopefully also OpenSim. It would be to my liking. Why OpenSim? Oh, I'll just quickly mention our uh, expo uh, for region building. So uh, why OpenSim? Well, we, if you remember two years ago, we did a comparison of a lot of 3D environments and came to our favorite one, OpenSim. And then last year we set out with basically a um, bare piece of land Oops, I have to catch up with my speakeasy yard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about this one. So, okay. And now they're coming up the workshop. Yes. And um, two years ago, we um, in Evo, Evo is our sort of annual workshop, you know, language teachers by the hundreds and thousands get together. Thanks, Leah. <laughs> um, and uh, for five weeks, we immerse ourselves in various activities. This year in January, we focused on storytelling and I have some beautiful products that are brought with me. I'll come to that in a minute. But two years ago, we decided it was OpenSim. And now what we did is this bare piece of land. It looks much, much more beautiful. That was last year. And this is what education in Kitely is this year. A gorgeous for sim region, almost full of uh, various spots for uh, what we love, the storytelling part of it. And it's so beautiful. It's got lakes. It's got um, 
parks. It's got several castles, it's got sandboxes. And here, this EVO session to which I would like to very much invite you, um, the EVO session will take place here. And this is where we will also learn uh, building, an, um, uh, building an open sim, but not only in virtual worlds. And some of our builders are also teaching us how to create a hut in Second Life, for example. Uh, thanks, Shaikin. And uh, some of our um, some of our activities coming up will also be about building in virtual reality. So, education in Second Life is still active, and education in OpenSim is beautiful, and we're so proud of what the teachers have put together for our EVO session. I was, I was amazed, absolutely amazed, amazed at the beauty, amazed at the products. So, and the storybooks, which I'd like to present from this year's EVO session, um, are the fantastic work we did. Now, coming up, as I said, it's about building, but this time we did focused on storytelling. And here, in uh, I'm going to present some of the examples. So if you could pay, perhaps take those links in the Speakeasy Hut and, and check it out for afterwards. I pasted a couple of them. There are done in Book Creator. Book Creator is an online platform which allows us to put screenshots together in form of comic books or in form of uh, reading books. They've got several templates for that. And we use the book creator to develop the story. And then we took the screenshots from Second Life. Here are the examples. We're so proud of them. And especially the one from Singapore 1825 by Chris Muni Singh. So well done. And some of you may know Chris Muni Singh. Yeah, he joined our EVO session and he took us to his Singapore 1825 island, uh, which is absolutely adorable. And he built that together with Kaylee West, if some of you know him from Second Life, Dr. Scott Grant, Monash University. Does anybody know him? No? Oh, she's here volunteering. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, it's so great to be among friends. So I'll come to the uh, almost the end of my session. And I hope to get another five minutes to actually ask you, the audience, a couple of questions. Here's the amazing journey that I started 2003 and the year-funded project. And here's Excalibur number five. So made more than 2 million euro. No, funding, 2 million euro. <laughs> oh, Kaylee, we love her, absolutely love her. And Chris Mooney saying was a student of Kaylee's. <laughs> this is where the connection goes. <clears throat> so um, the one thing which was the purpose of my talk today was to invite you to the EVO 2022 session. Um, check out one more time the link to sign up. It's an unofficial link because sign up apparently only starts in January, but I'd like to give you that one again. And um, this EVO immersive session will focus on building in virtual worlds and virtual reality. So we have some of our language teachers, experts, or building in framevr.io, in an engage, in old space VR, and Mozilla Hub. And we want to learn this kind of building too in virtual reality, as well as in virtual worlds, which is then OpenSim and Second Life. And I'm also part of the EVO uh, session Minecraft MOOC. So, in order to prepare for Excalibur, yeah. This is where I stop about what's happening in the metaverse for us language educators. And uh, can I ask you a couple of questions, the audience, if I may? 
You can also be free to ask me a couple of questions. And uh, it's just, uh, well, the biggest question I have is, is have you met people in world who <sighs> the unofficial link, did I paste it not? Did I not paste it? Oh, it's the, the tiny URL link that I pasted. Let the me grab already that unofficial one. Yeah. Let me grab that uh, unofficial one again, one more time. Okay, um, Heike, there's a sure. question already. Um, I got lost in the chat. What is the unofficial link again? Yeah, that's the one. I just pasted it. Oh, it's right. in okay. Canvas. And as I said, it's don't expect any activities when you sign up there. It's a Canvas link, but uh, from January onwards, we will be able to, to officially announce that one. So you can sign up a little bit beforehand. <laughs> and um, Friends Charming worked on A-Frame via our web project in regards to spaces like that. That sounds wonderful. Uh, Rainan, perhaps we could ask Friends to, uh, if he wants to present how to build if he, if he knows how to build a frame VR, do you? Oh, is he here? Probably is. And um, do you, you know of people who stayed in world because they wanted to learn a language or who came in world because they wanted to learn a language? And do you know of people who stayed in world because they learned to build? Friends, good you're here. <laughs> Rhinan says absolutely. Oh, can can I ask the audience? I mean, you can also ask me questions, but I would love to know from you because do you remember last year and the year before? I keep calling for a um, big building project. What I'd like to do with all of you guys, uh, the Tower of Babel. <laughs> The Tower of Babel with all of those different. Well, it would be it, the thing is that I asked you, um, what do you think will keep will bring people in the world or what keeps them in world? And a lot of you said, well, easier entry, uh, more orientation, more this that, and the other. And we've been doing this for 15 years and people are not staying. <laughs> they come in world, yes, but they're not staying. So I would love to perhaps get everyone together to, for a big, 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 big building project. The Tower of Babel. And I will keep asking you every year again until we do it. <laughs> so with this, I'm closing. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, um, Heike. And by the way, um, I know some people who come for um, languages and at least to practice uh, some languages in uh, OpenSIM. So thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, informative and interesting um, presentation. And as a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. We now are moving um i'm sorry uh, also we encourage you to visit the oscc 21 poster expo in the oscc expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrade 2 resources in oscc expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the oscc expo regions uh, the next session will be uh, at 11 a.m. and uh, in this keynote region, and it is entitled Grand Opening of Open Simulator Art. Thank you again to our speaker and the audience.